Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do three or four problems, beginning with problem number 150. Problem number 150. As you can see, it's already on the blackboard. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, if the numerator of a fraction is increased by 1, if the numerator of the fraction is increased by 1, and the denominator by 3, we are told that it becomes 4 7. On the other hand, if the numerator and the denominator are both decreased by 1, it becomes 2 thirds, we are told. The question simply is, what is that fraction? If you like, you can do it yourself first, pause the video, do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. Okay, I'll give you three or four seconds for you, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, here we go. Let's begin. So the first thing, the first thing we need to do in our solution is to define our unknown. The unknown quantity, the quantity that we're looking for is the fraction. Let's define it. Let's, let's represent it. Let our fraction be, let our fraction be f over n. Not, not f over n, not, I was thinking about fraction, not f over n rather, but numerator over denominator. This is going to be our fraction. We're going to use letter n to represent the numerator, Letter D will represent the denominator of the fraction. And now we can begin the story. If the numerator is increased by 1 and the denominator by 3, so here's our numerator that we started out with m. If we increase that by 1, we are told, increase, increase it by 1 and the denominator by 3. So this is the denominator we begin with. If we increase it by 3, then we are told that it becomes equal to 4 seventh. So that's our first equation. Let's move on. The second sentence will give us our second equation. We are told that if numerator and denominator, they are both decreased. This time we're going to decrease them by 1. So here's our numerator, decrease it by 1. Here is our denominator, decrease it by 1. And we are told that if we were to do that, it becomes equal to 2 thirds. There you go. <coughs> two straightforward simple equation. Two unknown. Two straightforward simple linear equations, that is. Two unknowns, we should have no problem. Simply saying that two straightforward linear equation, strictly speaking, is not enough. I left out something. We have to qualify this statement by saying that these are two straightforward, simple, linear, independent equations. They have to be independent. Otherwise, we can't do anything with it. If, if somebody tells you, if somebody tells you that x plus y equals three, and then they go on to tell you that two x, two x plus two y equals six. But these are two equations, these are straightforward, these are linear, but these two equations are no good. It's, we, are, we will not be able to figure out the value of x and y from these two equations. Why? Because these two equations are not, not independent. The second equation is simply two times the first equation. Or first equation is just half of the second equation. This won't, this won't do. In other words, the second equation is not giving us any more new information than the first information did. It's the same, equa same equation. Just multiplied by two, they are not independent equations. Here, these two are independent equations. Let's carry on. Let's cross multiply. Let's cross multiply n plus one times seven. Seven times n plus one would have to equal four times d plus three. Four times d plus three. And here we have n minus one times three. 3 times n minus 1 would have to equal 2 times d minus 1. 2 times d minus 1. Let's simplify it. So here we're going to get 7n plus 7 would have to equal 4d plus 12. 4 times 3. Let's bring the d to this side and, and the number to the co constant to that side. So we end up with 7n minus 4d equals 12 minus 7, that would be 5. That's our first equation. Let's see what we get out of this one. Let's have a demarcation here. 
So we're going to end up with 3n minus 3 equals to 2d minus 2. Now listen very carefully, okay? Now here we see 7n, here we see 3n. Okay, as I said, listen carefully. Here we see 3n, here we see 4, here, here we see 3n, here we see 7n. If you were to try to make the coefficient of n the same in both equations, the only, only way we can make the coefficient of n in this equation same as the coefficient of n in this equation is to multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 7. So we'll end up with 21n here, we will end up with 21n here. But if we were to do that, we'll end up doing twice the work. Let's find a simple way. Here we see negative 4d. You see that? Here we see negative 4d. Here we see 2d. Let's, before we actually do that part, at least let's bring the 2d to this side here. Let's bring the 2d to this side. We end up with 3n minus 2d. Bring the 3 to that side. It will become negative 2 and positive 3, which is 1. Here we see 4d. Here we see 2d. Instead of, messing, instead of messing with n, if we want to multiply this equation by 2, we'll end up with a negative 4d here, we have a negative 4d here. You see that? Let's do that. Let's multiply this equation. This is 1. Let's multiply this equation by 2. And we end up with 6n minus 4d equals 2. Here is our second equation. Let's put these two equations together and see where, see where we go with it. So, here we have 7n minus 4d equals 5. That's for the first equation here. Here we have 6n minus 4d equals 2. I'm going to put 2 over here little bit out and you will see in a second why. Here is our 5. 2 has a positive sign in front of it. This has a negative sign in front of it. This has a positive sign in front of it. Of course, if we were to add the two equations, if we were to add the two equations, it won't get us anywhere. We'll end up with negative 4d and negative 4d. We can end up with negative 8d. That's not what we want. We want to get rid of d. So let's subtract the equation. Let's subtract the second equation. Let's subtract the second equation from the first equation. And we subtract, when we subtract it, all the signs have to be reversed. So positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, negative, positive becomes negative. So here we have 7n minus 6n is going to give us n. Negative 4d and a positive 4d, they're going to cancel out, which equals 5 minus 2, which is going to give us 3. There is a there is our numerator. That, there is our numerator. Now what we have to do is use either one of these two equations to find the denominator. It doesn't really matter which one we use. Just use this one here. 6n minus 4d equals 2, we are told. 6n, right here, minus 4d. n we know is 3. Minus 4d equals 2. Negative 4d equals 2 minus 18, which means negative 4d equals negative 16. 2 minus 18 is going to give us negative 16. Negative 4d equals negative 16 which means d must be 4. There we go. In other words, the fraction that we were looking for, the fractions that we were looking for, must equal numerator, which is 3, and the denominator, which is equals 4. That's what we are claiming. We are claiming that this is the denominator. The very last thing we need to do, the very last thing we need to do is to make sure that this answer that we are getting is in fact correct. We must verify our answer. We're going to take a few seconds to do just that, but we need room for that. What can I erase here? I have to erase something, or oh, we can verify right here. Let's verify right here. In the problem, it told us that if we were to increase the numerator by 1, so we're claiming our fraction is 3 quarter. We're claiming that our fraction is 3 quarter. If we were to increase the numerator by 1, 3 will become 4. 3 will become 4 and increase the denominator by 3, 4 will become 7. 4 plus 3. If we were to do that, we are told that it becomes 4 7. 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. It does become 4 7.
Then they go on to tell us that if you were to decrease the numerator by 1, our numerator we are saying is 3, if you decrease it by 1, and decrease the denominator also by 1, the denominator we are saying is 4, if you decrease that by 1, on the top we'll end up with four, 3 minus 1 which is 2, and 4 minus 1 which is 3, we end up with 2 thirds, which is exactly what the problem tells us we should end up with, which means our answer is correct. That must be the fraction. That must be the fraction because it works. Let's do one more problem, shall we? Number 151. Number 151. This is find two numbers. Find two numbers whose sum is 42 and whose difference is 10. This is very straightforward, very, very simple problem because what we'll find, what we'll find here are two very, very childish, very, very infantile, simple equations. This is find two numbers whose sum is 42. So, whose sum is 42. Let's call these numbers x and y, two numbers whose sum is 42 and whose difference is 10. x minus y equals 10. That's all. Add the two equations, we are done. Y is going to cancel out and x plus x is 2x. 2x is going to equal 42 plus 10 which is 52. If it's 52 that means x must be x must be 26. Let's erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this anymore. Or we can continue here. This implies that x must be 26 and if x is 26 we are told that x minus y equals 10 which means if x is if x is 26 then 26 I'm using second equation here, 26 minus y equals 10. 26 minus what number equals 10? Of course, 16. That implies that y must be 16. There you go. Or rather here, 26 and 16. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Find two numbers, this is number 152. Find two numbers whose sum is 69. and whose difference is 23. Exact same situation, same exact scenario, nothing different. Let's do it together. Two numbers whose sum is 69. So let's call them x, x and y. Sum is 69 and whose difference, x minus y, we are told is 23. Again, we add the two equations, so y they're going to cancel out. x plus x is going to be 2x equals 12 carry 1 8 and 9 92 which means x equals divide both sides by 2 divide both sides by 2 and that will give us our x 2 is going to cancel out and x equals how many fours how many four how many twos does 9 have how many twos does 9 have 2 9 has 4 4 twos 4 twos are 8 the remaining one goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12. And 12 has 6 2's. Very good. So that tells us that x equals 46. If x equals 46, then y must be 23 because 46 minus y equals 23. Let's, let's do second equation here. x minus y, second equation right here. x minus y we are told is 23. x we just found out is 46. 46. 46 minus what number must be 23? It must be what? 23. X and Y are X and Y are 46 and 23. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Number 153. 
one half of the sum of two numbers we are told is 17. One half of the sum of two numbers we are told is 17. They go on to tell us and one quarter of their one quarter of their difference is three. Find them. So let's do that. We have two straightforward sentences. Those two sentences will give us the two equations that we need, two independent equations. One half of their sum is 17. So we have, let's pretend the two numbers are x and y again one more time. If you were to take their sum and take a half of that, that we are told is 17. That's our first equation. Let's not leave it like this. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And the 2 is going to cancel out. And x plus y we are told equals 17 times 2, which is 34. That's our first equation. They go on to tell us that one quarter of their difference is 3. So if we take their difference, x minus y, take a quarter of that, that we are told is 3. Again, multiply both sides of the equation by 4. 4 is going to cancel out. And that tells us that x minus y must be 12. Let's put it here. x minus y is 12. Add the two equations again, y they're going to cancel out, x plus x is 2x, must equal 6 plus 1 is 4, 46 which means, which implies that x must be 23. If x is 23, we can figure out from here, 23 minus y equals 20, 12, 23 minus what number equals 12? 23 minus 12 would equal y, and how much is that? 24 minus 12, 24 minus 12 would have been 12, but 23 minus 11. Y must be 11. And that's it, that's all we have for today. Bye now.